So we're putting in some flooring here. We've got a nice big room with two dormers. And the flooring we selected was Quick Step Studio, quick DIY style. And the color that we selected is Restoration Oak. And we chose this one because I like all the variations in each plank. It looks like multiple planks. It's about 760 square feet. And what's nice about this stuff, even though the quality is not the greatest, on the backing, it does have the backing already attached, so you don't have to put a, a foam down on your floor. You still can if you want extra layer, but I'm just going to put it right over the plywood here, and we'll see how it looks. So we started the first rail and put these spacers in so that the flooring doesn't go under the drywall because you need space for an expansion gap. So we've got those here. And then further down, there was too much of a gap from the bottom of the drywall to the floor for those spacers. So there's some screws to keep it from going under the drywall. So this is the before, what it looks like. And I'll show you guys what the after looks like once it's done. Guys, and I'm gonna give you a quick tutorial on how to install this flooring if you want to do it yourself it's really simple to do basically on the ends here when you start you don't want anything less than a six inch piece and you just want to stagger your joints they don't have to be perfect usually the piece you cut off the other end you could just start with on this end that leaves you minimal scrap and makes you get the most for your money uh, when you start along your walls you want to have at least a 3 8 gap and that's gonna allow a little bit for expansion uh, this wood does expand and contract with temperature changes and that'll give you a little bit of room. If you don't leave that gap there, your floor can end up buckling and you definitely don't want that because then you're going to have to rip the whole thing back out. So basically, uh, you just cut the end of your board off flush, the tongue or the, the tongue of the board you cut it off. Start with a little shim there, about 3 eighths of an inch. You want to lock, lock this long side in here, sort of on an angle. And Kind of make sure it's in as far as you can get it and then what i recommend you don't need these but i definitely recommend buying a set of these tools these are for uh laminate flooring they're fairly cheap if i can find them on amazon i'll put a link below if you guys want to check them out this is just a tapping block and this thing here is really important it's you're able to put it on the edge of your board the ones along the wall and you can tap it over to tighten it up if your board slides or you just want to tap it Especially when you're on your end piece down there, you want to tap it to make sure everything's tight. So th this is one pretty significant tool to have if you're doing this. You could use a scrap piece of wood, put it on there, and then tap on it. That would work too, but I mean this thing has been through a lot. It's still holding up good. It has a little notch in it that slips over this notch, and you can just slide it and tap on it as you go. It makes it a lot quicker and easier to try and use a scrap piece. So basically, you get that piece in there. it up a little bit. Now you don't want to put it all the way down yet. You want to get a few pieces in here and then you can start tapping this side down because it's easier to lock it in here if it's up slightly on an angle. So then you want to lock your next piece in. Lock this end, short edge in first here with this. Up tight to this, up close to this piece. Lay it down. 
Then you want to start tapping it into this piece. Tap it over this way tight. And then finish tapping it in this way. And you just want to do that for a few pieces until you get about, I don't know, three or four pieces down. If you guys have any questions about this floor or installing it or anything, uh, we'll chat about it in the comments below. So make sure you check those out if you guys have any questions. And make sure you guys open a couple boxes at a time. That way your pattern gets staggered and if the color variations are off just a hair you won't notice it. Don't run one whole box out and then open the next box. Make sure you open like three to five boxes at a time. Alright, now that I got about four pieces down, I'm going to start from this end and start tapping it in so that it lays down flush. Some flooring goes together easier than others. For some reason, this one you do have to tap the heck out of it to get it to go down. Definitely want to make sure you tap it far enough to where it's all the way down. You can see how that's up over there. That means it's not all the way in. Alright, so I got these ones set down here, these first two. I'm going to leave these ones up slightly. While I get the next few in, then I'll tap those ones down. You always want to leave your end up just slightly until you get your next couple rows, or your next couple pieces in. But this blocks, this tapping blocks nice because it doesn't damage your board and it, you're able to slide it along there fairly quickly. Instead of using a scrap piece that you would have to snap in there. And like I said before, this stuff's nice because it already has the backing installed on it. So you don't have to worry about rolling it out and it get messed up and stuff. Now you could put an additional backing down with this, but I'm not. I'm just going to use the stuff that came with it. It seems like it's working out well. All right, got a few pieces in. I'm just going to go back here and start tapping this down. You can see there, it's down. All the way. One thing I want to mention, guys, is whenever you first start this, I like running the long ways with the room. You want to keep your 3 8 gap at the, at the other end when you start. And you're going to want to put shims or screws or something. Put a bunch of them back there so that this floor doesn't slide. And put some additional boxes of unopened flooring on it to help hold it down. So when you're beating on these, the whole floor doesn't slide and you lose that gap. When I first started, I didn't put enough screws in. Uh, I put them behind it to hold it, but it pushed the screws a little bit. Make sure you put enough screws so that this doesn't slide. Then when you're done, make sure you take the screws out because you want it to be able to move a little bit. Alright guys, now even though you don't need these, what's nice about these tools and why I recommend them, once you get up close to your wall, there's not enough room here to put this block and hammer this in tight. And it'd be really hard to get this last piece, especially this piece in. Basically, you could get your block on here like that, throw a scrap piece here so it doesn't nick your floor. Then you can hook that on there and hammer it in. Hey guys, and another quick tip, when you're marking the top of these boards, you don't want, you can't mark the bottom because there's foam on there. When you mark the top, being that these are dark, just put a piece of like painter's tape or something on there first, 
and then mark that. That way you'll be able to see your line when you're cutting it. Alright guys, the last piece of four here, finally. So if you guys have any questions, I'm going to show you what the overall product look, uh, overall floor looks like here in a second. But if you guys have any questions or, or anything, we'll talk about it in the comments below. So make sure you leave a comment if you guys use this stuff. And uh, like I said, I did this video because I wanted to show you guys what the finished product of using this Quick Step Studio Restoration Oak. I wanted to show you guys what it looked like. If you found this video helpful, make sure you hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell so you guys get notified of the next video. And I will see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.